is about sort of the fair, you get a fair shake no matter what. Um, you know, they don't, they didn't have that. And so I, that kind of drew me to the law for, for whatever reason. I don't, that's just how my mind operated. And I thought, well, I'll go to law school and, uh, and become a lawyer. And so I did that, but I, I did that. I, I went at night. So I worked during the day, um, full time, went to law school at night and, uh, didn't, I had to stop working so I could study for the bar, take the bar exam, California bar exam, pass that. And then it was like, all right, now that I'm a newly licensed uh, attorney with no actual legal practice experience, who's going to hire me? And that's a really difficult task. So you want to talk about having some, you know, emotional reserve when your future is bleak you have this advanced degree you know you have a juris doctor yeah. and uh and you passed one of the hardest bar exams in the country and you can't get a job or you're working for free because there's so many people who are looking for that same position so i don't know i i was very thankful i i happened into a firm that needed uh a lawyer who had also kind of my background to be able to you know because i the constitutional issues I deal with, I mostly defend police officers and their uh, employing agencies against uh, civil rights actions. And so to be able to have someone who's comfortable talking to cops um, and has a little bit of the life experience, it's going to lend some legitimacy yeah. uh, to the advice. And so that's, it was just like a kind of a perfect, you know, combination of things. And, and that's how I ended up started starting to, to practice. So I've been doing that for a couple of years now. And, um, you know, the, the, kind of the full arc of it, um, bringing me to here, uh, you know, what I find is that, and it's interesting because I've, I've heard this by other guests on your, on your show about this like late thirties, early forties transition period where it's like, all right, now that I've, I've basically reached what, when I was in high school, what was encouraged for us to reach, you know, getting, going through an advanced, you know, from bachelor's to an advanced degree, you know, joining this white collar workforce here in the Bay area. And still within me is that sort of, um, that need to want to do something for others. Yeah. And, um, you know, by either relating my own story and also, you know, like you, I think a lot of your guests, you know, being involved in things that, you know, benefit others. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. And in a short version, that's, that was the arc of, of my life from Marine Corps to, to practicing law in San Francisco. Yeah. Pretty incredible story, by the way. Um, what would you say to whether they're high school students or college students right now that are thinking about the military, what advice would you give them um, if they were to ask you? Look, I think that there's a lot of there's a lot of jobs in the military that can lead to a lot of great things. You can um it depends on what you want to get out of it. And um because different branches offer different opportunities. So for those who maybe want to learn something in the trades or something that's more applicable once you get out of the military you know, look at the bigger branches like the Navy or the Air Force where you can, you know, learn from a mechanical standpoint. You can learn a lot of great things and you will learn responsibility like you've never had before. I mean, the, what we put in trust in the hands of uh, 19 and 20 year old men and women, you know, deployed around the world day in and day out. Um, it would I think it would freak out most people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, certainly I was a, I was I just turned 23 when I met my platoon for the first time. Wow. And, uh, and then and when we got, when we were in Ramadi, there was no government. And when there was a government trying to be put together, their only contact with the United States of America was me and, uh, a couple other young 20 year old, um, platoon commanders. Right. So th there's a lot of responsibility that gets put on, on, uh, Marines and sailors and soldiers and airmen, at a very young age. And, and it's a lot of fun. You can go out and do that. I'd say that if you are looking 
to do it as a resume builder, I would caution against it. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Because some of it's it, it's just too hard. It's too hard. It's too much of a a um, there's too much that is going to be demanded out of you that if you're just trying to look for something to to take away from it, you're going to be disappointed. Um, you've really got to have this a a, a true passion for service that and and i'll give the same lesson that my drone instructor gave me it's not about you and if you're if you're willing to say that if you're willing to say this is not about me this is about this is about my country this is about uh the men and women next to me you know serving them and that you know and look not all not all positions in all branches put you in a position where you're going to you know your life is in imminent danger but especially if you want to go that route yeah Sure. You, know, you really have got you've really got to be of sound heart and mind to say this is I'm doing this because it's the right thing to do. And it's got nothing with how it might benefit you. Otherwise, the benefits are just the collateral, you know, goodies that you get because you happen to do it. You know, do it for the right reason. That's what I'd say. But also, you know, don't be discouraged by, you know, the thought of like, oh, it might be too hard or you know, I don't know if I have what it takes. It's like, no, go test yourself. You never know where your limit is unless you um, get it tested. And you can find out and you, you push a lot further uh, past what your comfort zone is than you might think. Um, you know, that's just from personal experience and watching other guys do it too. Uh, I thought I had a, a a threshold and pretty quickly blew through that uh, just in training. So not to mention actual deployments. Um, but I encourage, I would encourage anyone uh, young or old, you know, within the age limit um, that if you're, if you're even considering it, there's a reason for that. Right. And so tap into that reason, explore that and sit on it. Think about why is it that you're being drawn to, to the armed services and, and let, you know, there's, there's no greater, no greater privilege, I think, in um, and, and it's certainly an experience that uh, you can't get anywhere else. So yeah, you know, I'd I'd be for it. I'd be for it. Well, I I think that that sounds like great advice, not only for a decision to go into the military, but really to go into any line of work or a hobby, a commitment to raising mm-hmm. a family or getting married is. Um, you know, being all in and understand the ramifications of that decision. Um, Phil, I, I really, yeah. r- really, really appreciate the time that you've given us today to understand not only the process for you as an individual, but the process of going into the military, serving your country, and some of the ramifications of that. Um, so thank you for that time. Um, you yeah. the Warrior Manual, a soon-to-be-released book, mm-hmm. Not only is it on your Instagram, but now it is in my podcast <laughs> to give you some accountability. <laughs> um, I, and I'll yeah. tell you, I, I can't wait to to see it come out after speaking to you and learning more about your mental state and your process. I think that it'll be a valuable tool for all of us. So um, I, cool. I, I encourage yeah. you. Well, well, right now it's uh, the the manuscript's finished, and it's it's um, it's a matter of right now of me going through an editing process and then, you know, I got to, I got to put my pitch together for a, for a publisher, but it'll be released uh, one way or another. Um, even if that means uh, I got to self promote on Amazon. Yeah, there's well, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong um, with that. And yeah. you, you let us know if there's any way we can help with that. Um, I know you're a husband and a father, um, a litigator. Mm-hmm. And as you also say, life coach, and I think you've given us some incredible wisdom today on this show, um, you know, again, we could probably go on, you've, you've picked up so many other topics I'd love to talk about. And and that's why I do this. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to have to have you back. We'll we'll take a little break, uh, in the next month or two, but I'm going to have to have you back because there's a couple topics you brought up that I think are also interesting and exciting. Um, what's, you know, you, you brought some of these things up about projects you're working on. Is it best that people just follow you on Instagram or do you have, have you developed a website for what you're doing at all or where are you at on those things? Uh, yeah, right now the best way to follow me is on Instagram. It's, uh, Phil Downs, 
uh, last name is D O W N S or, uh, my, you can find me P downs one seven, seven, five P down 1775. Okay. Well on Instagram every- and, I, and I just try to post the just stuff that I do, which is not, I'm not, I'm not looking to be flashy. It's just, uh, what you see is what you get. No filters ever. Uh, we don't we don't like filters. Your latest post, bare necessities, a kettlebell and a tire workout, man. That that's right up my alley. That's right. Um, okay, so if you're listening, yeah. uh, if you're listening, let's hold uh, Phil accountable for his book because now I'm interested and in I'm sure you will be. Um, and yeah. reach out to him on Instagram. You know, if you're thinking about going into the military, I'm sure he can probably offer a little bit more. Um, you know, than what we've had time to talk about on the show today. And Phil, you know, there's not much more we can say besides thank you for your service, what you've done for our country, the the strength and fortitude that you've had to do what you've done for us, um, especially at a period of time in which you did that. So um, with that, I'll say thank you. It's and, my pleasure. Uh, really appreciate you being on the show. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. Well, there you go. It's Phil Downs. And man, I just was really touched by his interview and the time we spent together on the call You know, I love his line, have a bias for action. I just love that. I mean, could you just imagine what has gone through his mind in different scenarios, whether it's in combat and or leading the troops and or training here back in the United States and having a bias for action? And, you know, I like to use that line in my business and every day when I get up and think about, you know, what I'm going to do and how I'm going to map out my day. And I just love that, that notion of having a bias for action as opposed to inaction, right? Sitting on the couch, flipping on the TV, or waddling through social media for an hour and wasting time, but having a bias for action. So thanks for that, Phil. You also dropped a little nugget, and that was do it as aggressively as possible. And boy, I would not want to be on the other end of your team over in Afghanistan. So again, thank you for serving our country and all that you've done. And that's our show for the week. If you enjoyed this show and others, please share it with a friend. Go on iTunes, subscribe if you can. It means a lot to us. That's what helps this show stay on the air. And it encourages others to listen. So thank you so much. And I look forward to bringing another great guest to you next week. Have a great finish of your week and an incredible weekend.